Hi everybody, we are looking at uh, concepts, uses, uh, properties and uh, sustainability of polymeric systems in this course. And uh, while we are discussing uh, polymer processing and recycling techniques, we have several times talked about uh, usage of uh, solvents and catalysts uh, to uh, look at uh, how to recover monomers or other small molecular systems from polymers or uh, during the service life how small molecules can interact with these polymers so that their recycling becomes a challenging aspect. So overall in terms of handle and uh, process these polymers and from their sustainability point of view, the absorption and leaching uh, used in these polymeric systems is extremely important. So by keeping our uh, focus on sustainability, uh, let us discuss uh, what are the issues associated with uh, fate and transport of small molecules along with the polymeric materials. And uh, the phenomena which determines this uh, fate and transport is absorption and leaching. Absorption where small molecules from other polymeric systems or surrounding uh, phases come into polymer or leaching where uh, small molecules from a polymeric system go to other polymeric systems or other solid systems or liquid and gaseous systems. So let us look at this uh, fate and transport from the point of view of uh, polymers in the uh, environment. Uh, basically one of the key features is uh, the density of polymers uh, being low and uh, the, when we say low, it is in comparison to dust, uh, soil and uh, clay and various other things which are also there in our water bodies for example. So what happens is deposition uh, of uh, uh, plastic objects is not very easy because the density is low and so they tend to float and they tend to travel long distance. And of course also we know that uh, the uh, presence of uh, these uh, polymers in environment is over a long time because of uh, lack of biodegradation, lack of degradation of these materials. So given that they can get carried over a very long distance due to their low density and given that they are around in the environment for very long distance, there is a, we have to worry about not just the short term exchange but even the long term exchange of small molecules between polymer and the environment. And that is the reason the uh, Polymer itself being there in the environment is cause of concern, but given that polymer is exchanging molecules from with the environment, we have to also worry about what are these molecules being exchanged between polymers and the environment. So for example, uh, absorption is where the small molecules are going from environment to the polymer, from water to polymer or from oil to polymer or from air to polymer. And, uh, Conversely, we also have uh, small molecules going from polymer to the environment and all of this is happening over a long distance and over long time. Now why could this be important? Let us say uh, we have a polymer which is uh, uh, floating in uh, uh, a, a, a river body, let us say a, a river and uh, the river water is generally clean and therefore uh, uh, there may be some exchange polymers may have some plasticizer, it may gain, get into the river and that is one cause uh, of concern that we have. Now let us say when this uh, river flows down and then it encounters a polluting uh, stream which is coming from some other industry and there are some uh, uh, ingredients, uh, the chemical and pharmaceutical and dye industry and so some uh, pollutants which are coming from there and uh, now the river uh, water becomes uh, polluting. And uh, during this period, the plastic uh, material which is floating can exchange and absorb some of the small molecules which are part of the polluted water. And now again uh, the plastic uh, is continuing to flow and again it encounters a reasonably clean water, but the polymer itself still has those small molecules which were picked up from the waste water. So therefore you can see that how plastics are closely interacting with the surrounding and uh, their state will be very different compared to what is the state of the environment. But given that they are around for a long time and longer distances, they can exchange and have an impact which is not just related to polymers alone, but how these polymers interact with the environment. So therefore, this uh, thermodynamics of uh, solute exchange, you know whether uh, the dye molecule which is a pollutant in the river, will it come to polymer? The plasticizer molecule which is there in the polymer, will it go to water? 
Similarly, some uh, molecule which is let us say dissolved in water can come to plastic, then uh, it gets absorbed in plastic, then will it also again leach out and go to some other place soil or will it get uh, evaporated and get exchanged with air or water vapor. So, all of these are questions where we have to look at what is the solubility of these small molecules in polymeric systems. If let us say solubility is uh, not there or 0, then we do not have to worry about the solutes will not get exchanged with polymers. But remember polymers are certain type of hydrocarbons or with heteroatoms like oxygen and nitrogen. So, they have wide ranging possibilities of interactions. There is of course, Van der Waals interactions, there is possible to have hydrogen bonding. So, polymers come in all types of interactions and similarly, these small molecules also come in all types of uh, interactions possible. So, generally we will find some small molecules which can always interact with these polymers and so some amount of solubility of small molecules will always be there. What is uh, of more concern for us is if some small molecules which have been identified as toxic molecules, then we have to try to see if polymers are acting as reservoirs of these small molecules. So, that they are absorb these small molecules because they are soluble in polymer and then they are carried along with the polymer itself. So, this is something where role of polymers will have to be examined. So, solute exchange and solubility is one of the important terms that we have to worry about. The other important thing is even if let us say solubility is high in polymers, if it is not getting to the surrounding phases, if it is not getting transferred to water or air, then again uh, it is something at least it is getting confined to the polymer phase. So, the partitioning between different phases is something we have to worry about. Here it could be polymer and water. And partitioning is generally thought of as concentration in polymer phase to the, par parti the partitioning related to concentration in another phase. The ratio of these two tells us what is the so called carrying capacity of one phase with respect to the other or how does a solute get partitioned between the two phases. So, if let us say we start with uh, the solute in liquid phase, it will go to polymer phase if Cp is very high. If Cp is 0, then it will remain in the liquid phase itself and it is therefore not getting partitioned between liquid phase and polymer phase. So, each solute will come up, uh, will have a characteristic partitioning coefficient. So, depending on the concentrations in the liquid phase and the polymer phase or the air uh, vapor phase and the polymer phase or between even two polymer phases because we have multi-layer films, uh, polymer uh, materials which are blends. So, we have possibilities where polymer polymer exchange is also possible. So, partitioning of a solute between these two phases is equally important. And finally, uh, we need to understand from the point of view of if uh, concentration changes in the surrounding phases, how much is getting absorbed in the polymer. And generally, this is talked about in terms of a sorption isotherm, where what we say is uh, we will look at. Uh, a polymer which is getting exposed to uh, various concentrations in the liquid phase let us say and uh, we at equilibrium what is the concentration that is absorbed in the polymer itself. And so, generally uh, you will have uh, various types of uh, uh, absorption isotherms. So, that uh, whenever you increase the uh, concentration in the liquid phase, the amount which is absorbed in the polymer will also increase. But there are various uh, different forms in which these isotherms can be, but this is an important indicator of how solute exchange is happening between polymer and the other phases. And uh, one important question which is related to the fate and transport is uh, dependent on uh, the kinetics, how fast or slow is this exchange happening. And uh, this exchange between polymers and surrounding is in fact exploited in an application. So, if you have a controlled drug delivery application, what we do is uh, we make let us say a gel a particle or a or a basically what is called a drug delivery vehicle. And uh, in this drug delivery vehicle, we have to absorb the drug molecule. And then we ingest it when it goes to whichever part of our body where it is supposed to go and act. Uh, let us say it goes to the stomach and then leaching happens. So, that the small molecules first has to be absorbed in this drug delivery vehicle, then it is carried to let us say our stomach and then it is leached out to the surrounding or it is released. And by manipulating the rate of 
release, we can have what is called a controlled drug delivery. And uh, those of you who have uh, looked at, uh, let's say, even simple medicine like anti-acid, you can see that some anti-acids uh, are uh, to be taken more frequently while there is an anti-acid, which is controlled drug delivery, which can be taken a uh, lot less frequently because it goes in our stomach and releases the anti-acid active ingredient over a longer period of time. Otherwise, as soon as tablet dissolves in our stomach, the whole the drug molecule gets released. And then, of course, it uh, cannot do its job, so therefore it goes out of the system. But if we have a controlled release, then we can have sustained release and overall uh, drug action for a longer duration of time. So that's the idea of controlled drug delivery. So you can see you can exploit polymeric vehicles to achieve this controlled drug delivery. And for controlled drug delivery, polymeric systems are very important applications. So here also, absorption is involved to put the drug in the delivery vehicle, and then leaching is involved. And drug, which is the solute in this case, is getting exchanged between surrounding and the polymer system. Another thing to keep in mind is uh, when we say absorption, it is in the bulk. So we have the uh, polymeric system, and uh, of course, it's an entangled mass, or it may also have some crystalline portion. Uh, but what we are talking is in terms of a solute which is there everywhere in the polymeric system. And how this solute is getting absorbed, how much quantity of it will get absorbed, uh, when we change the surrounding concentration, will more get uh, absorbed? All of these are questions that we have discussed. Additionally, there is a possibility that when we have a macromolecular system like this, and uh, what happens is only the molecules are there on the surface. So this picture that I have drawn here is basically a zoomed version of uh, a polymer film. And we look at this small portion and this is how it looks like. While uh, the earlier picture that I had drawn was in the bulk. So this is absorption, where molecule is everywhere, and this is called adsorption. So we might have to worry about both of these when we are looking at small molecule exchange. Sometimes the small molecules may only adsorb and may not absorb, but they are still getting carried along with the polymer molecule by being on the surface. So remember that uh, adsorption as a phenomena is related to surfaces. And uh, for example, this option isotherm, similarly, we also have adsorption isotherm. But again, the exchange is between the two phases, but solutes rather than going inside the polymer system are only confined to the surface. And this is possible because they interact very closely with the macromolecules on the surface of the macromolecules. So let us uh, close this lecture by uh, discussing a little bit about kinetics. Uh, a generic expression that you can talk about kinetics is where uh, the uptake or the amount of small molecule which has gone inside the polymer phase at time t related to whatever is the maximum amount that can go in uh, is basically function of time. And uh, if you see that uh, the it is proportional to square root of time, then we have the fixed law of diffusion as we discussed in uh, lecture 61. But uh, quite often in polymers, because of the molecular relaxation, because of the glass to rubber transition that happens when small molecule comes in and it has to plasticize before diffusion can happen. So because of all of these things, uh, n is uh, not 0.5. And there, those times, we call it either a non-ficient diffusion, anomalous, or phenomena where both diffusion and relaxation of macromolecular chains are happening. And one specific case, uh, which is observed quite a lot in case of polymer, where this absorption is linearly proportional to time. So the absorption amount is proportional to time. And this is called the case 2 diffusion. And this is generally a discussion where we also looked at uh, when we use, let us say, solvents to recover the polymer, when we use dissolution to recover the polymer. In all of these cases, what happens is uh, there is a polymer which is in the glassy state. And when the small molecules start coming, they will get uh, absorbed and then they plasticize. And so what happens is in the material, there is a front. 
So, this side of a front the behavior is rubber like where macromolecular segmental flexibility is there while on the other side there is glassy state. And the diffusion coefficient is very less in the glassy state while diffusion coefficient is reasonably high in the case of rubbery state. So, there is a front which keeps on moving as these small molecules keep on coming in, they get absorbed, they modify the macromolecular flexibility and therefore, this front keeps on moving. So, in this case, the uh, amount of uh, absorption uh, that can happen is proportional to time. So, with this we will now look at leaching which is the reverse where the solute get exchanged and one of the reasons why leaching is very important from an environmental impact point of view is for example, uh, the number of dissolved organic compounds which are there in polymer and the amount which are getting leached with the plastics which are there in uh, marine environment. So, you can see there is a huge impact in terms of not just the number of these compounds, but also the amount of these compounds. And so, leaching of additives and monomers which are there in polymeric materials to surrounding is an important uh, point for us to remember. What we can also have is absorption from one location and then leaching or release in another. So, polymeric materials as I discussed earlier can act as transporters of uh, cargo, in this case the cargo is the small molecules. And so, their impact is felt in lot more ways than just whatever they contain themselves. One of course, uh, uh, way in which we can use therefore, polymers is to look at the state of the environment. So, polymers can be used as a sampling device to figure out where all uh, what molecules are there by looking at the small molecules which are present in it. So, we can think of this polymer as a sampler, sampler is something which collects sample. So, if I take a polymer samples and examine what are the small molecules in it, I can then get to know whatever may be the small molecules in the liquid surrounding in the environment or the vapor or the air surrounding in the environment. So, therefore, we can measure the amounts of compounds in polymers to estimate the amounts of uh, in the environment. So, therefore, it becomes an effective uh, sampler. So, with this uh, we close this lecture which is related to exchange of small molecules in polymers and is very important from the point of view of the environmental impact of polymeric systems. Thank you.